I want to discuss about this function question. So let's take a look at this question number nine. Okay, we are going to skip uh, eight first. If later there's time, we can take a look at eight again. Let's at least try nine and then try one last question, which is a vectors question. And we want to show that f inverse exists and we want to define f inverse in similar form. This is the kind of question that I'm going to do super fast. Because I've practiced for it, there's no, no big uh, customization or improvisation that I need for such question. So part one, according to what we have been discussing, right? What are the few things that I'll be doing for part one? I will draw the graph. Because I'm trying to show that f inverse exists. If, it, if I want to show that it does not exist, then I can probably use a counter example. Okay, so I'm going to draw a graph. This is an easy graph. I can also use my calculator. I will have this. I have a y is equal to fx here. This point here is at minus 1, 5. So I have my graph as this. This point here is minus 3.2361 and a zero. X-axis, Y-axis. And based on this, I can say that a horizontal line, Y is equal to K, where K is, let's say, a number that is less than five. It's going to cut the graph at only one point. Therefore, it is a one-to-one -one function. Therefore, F inverse exists. Okay? My aim is to try to talk about all the possible horizontal line that is going to cut the graph. That will secure for me the two marks that is probably going to be allocated for the first part of this question. Then uh, we are going to let y be equal to fx, which means that y is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 4. Uh, and I'm going to make x a subject. I'll end up with x after I do a, I did a completing square or using a quadratic formula. I'm going to end up with x to be equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 5 minus y. And since um, I'm looking at this where x is supposed to be less than minus 1, this is the domain that is given to me by the question. Since x is less than minus 1, I'm going to be choosing it as minus 1 minus square root of 5 minus y. This is because x is less than minus 1. So I know that f inverse is going to be mapping x such that it is going to take up the expression or the rule as this, where x belong to all real numbers. I'm just simply following this. okay? And from this, I can see what is the range of f. The range of f is from minus infinity all the way until 5. And this is going to give me the domain of f inverse. So for this, x is supposed to be less than 5. Four marks is a giveaway. I think we can practice enough so that I can secure these four marks way before this question even appear in the exam. Part two. Part two, write down the equation of the line in which y is equal to fx must reflect in order for in order to obtain the graph of y is equal to f inverse. So what is the line? The line is y is equal to x. I think this question is not very I personally find, okay, it's not a very well-set question. Okay, because I have told you before, right, usually when you see this kind, where they say, hence, find fx is equal to f inverse x. Okay, the question says, hence, find fx is equal to f inverse x. You cannot treat this as an algebraic equation to solve. Okay, that means you cannot treat this as simply a question that will require you to to equate fx, this minus 2x plus 4, to be equal to f inverse, which is minus 1 minus square root of 5 minus x. You're not expected to do this. Why aren't you expected to do this? Because this is solving equation. It's a tedious equation. You can definitely use your calculator to solve for it even, since you have your GC. But the skill is actually very, very similar to what you have already learned in your secondary school. That means H2Math doesn't need to re-expose you to solving an equation which you can really do in your secondary school. So what that is tested in this particular question, whenever they give you this, right, is exploration, analysis, and improvisation. But because it is so classical, uh, we can actually prepare for this first. What is the aim? The aim is to improvise. 
find ways to improvise. So they can skip the tedious process of solving this algebraically. And that's why the question plays that, uh, hence that's why the question says this. And that is also why, right, if you to look at part 3, I think part 3 should have come before part 2, where they ask you to sketch the graph of y is good, y is good x and y is good f inverse x. Part 3 should have come before part 2. Okay, so, so this, I feel, is a flaw of this particular question. Because in order for me to continue with this, I will do an improvisation. Let me show you what I mean by the improvisation. I'm going to sketch this graph. Yeah, and I'm going to reflect it about the line y is equal to x myself. So this point, which is minus 1, 5, will become a point maybe here, 5 minus 1. It looks like 5 minus 1. So from here, it's going to be connected to here. So we have this. And I know that when this is supposed to be equated to this, instead of doing it algebraically, I look at the scenario. Based on the scenario, I know the answer is going to be this. And to work out this answer, it is not necessary that I just simply equate y is equal to fx to y is equal to f inverse x. I can also equate this to this. It is way simpler. So from fx is equal to f inverse x, through our analysis, we decide that an easier way for me to find the same answer is to go for this, let fx be equal to x, which is uh, to have a minus x squared minus 2x plus 4 to be equal to x. Way simpler. It is, a, it is a process of improvisation. And when you work on this, you are going to get two answers. One is x is equal to minus 4. The other one is x is equal to 1. Based on the graph, you already know that this is going to be rejected. Based on the graph. But if I, were to base on the, if I were to base a bit more on the requirement of the functions, I can, also, I can also try to discuss why 1 is going to be rejected. Because if fx is equal to f inverse x, they are supposed to share the same x. Which means that whatever x that is going to be the final answer, it must satisfy both the domain of f and the domain of f inverse at the same time. Which means that x must satisfy the domain of f. The domain of f is from minus infinity all the way until minus 1. And the domain of f inverse is from minus infinity all the way until 5. So, so the overlapping region tells me that x must be less than minus 1. So minus 4 is going to be my answer. This is an improvisation question that is, that is resultant from the graph that you have analyzed.